um, sermon topic sheet and uh, I see that it's not complete yet. Um, so, yeah, um, so any help that is required in completing? Um, I see that, uh, like some of you have filled in the, you know, the sermon title, which is good. Um, you know, but go ahead and fill in the points also as you work work on your sermon. You know, like what are those three points or what are those five points that you want to talk about? Because next class, you know, we will, uh, you know, we'll be inviting some of us to share what you prepared, right? So, um, um, yeah, so i uh, just like you to finish it, please. I thought today it will be done. Uh, so maybe you can take time after the class today um, to work on the sermon, maybe by tonight, if you can finish it, that will give you time to, you know, uh, practice, work on it, because you need to, uh, you know, time it to 12 minutes, right? We're saying that there is only 12 minutes for the sharing of the uh, sermon. So you need to be able to do that. So uh, is there anyone who's not yet filled in sermon topic, title, you know, please do that. Um, okay. Okay, if there's anyone who's not yet filled in, uh, you know, I'd like you to do that, please. And um, finish it so that uh, uh, we can move forward. Okay. Right. Okay, so... Um, Okay, let me just ask a few people. Okay, Felix, is Felix here? Felix was not there in yesterday's class. Um, Felix, uh, Felix, can you just tell us, uh, you know, uh, about the dew of heaven, which is your sermon topic? Um, could you just give more clarity on that? And also the sermon title, please, if you can. Um, You can either put it on the chat or maybe you can unmute and share um, about the dew of heaven, which is your, or your mic is faulty. Okay, no problem. Um, maybe you can just put it in the chat. You know, uh, what is it that you want to talk about? And uh, so that is, you know, you also have clarity on that and also about the sermon title, right? Okay, so you can do it during the class and I'll, uh, when you put it, I'll take a look at it. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, so the thing is, you know, what is it, you know, in in sharing the word, what is it that you 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 expect at the end of it? Right. That's the question that uh, at some point in the message, you know, we need to ask ourselves. Right. Uh, ask that question. You know, what is it that I I want at the end of it? Okay, um, is there a desire in my heart that God is putting in my heart? You know, what is it that, um, uh, yeah, so, sorry, Chris, uh, I just see your question. Yeah, every, every we'll have some presentation because we will have uh, probably half of the class, half of the duration we'll take maybe 20, 25 minutes for the presentation and the rest we will, so we might have maybe two, two to three, uh, it depends, two to three presentations, I guess. Okay. Um, uh, oh yeah. So if it's uh, two to three in a in one session, maybe it'll be six. Yeah, six or maybe four to six presentations every week, right? In, uh, spread across two sessions, right? Okay. Okay. So the question is, uh, you know, what is it that you expect uh, from the message? You know, um, what is uh, a, you know, sometimes what happens is, okay, God gives a word and uh, yes, you, um, you know, you pray through, you work on it and uh, you study and um, you, you, you have this uh, message that you want to share and, uh, and you have that. Okay. So uh, the thing is to go beyond that because uh, in concluding the message, in concluding the sharing of the message, obviously, you know, um, like, we said, you know, we want to conclude in a manner where people also experience the um, the power of the truth of what we share, 
right they have an encounter with the person of the lord jesus right and it's not just the word but it's the power in the word that uh, people experience right so um so it's good to pray and ask the lord lord what is it that uh, that you want to see you know at the end of it and uh, what is the in other words you know what is the fruit what is the um, what is the objective right is it to uh, when we bring this lord i'm i'm, I'm yes, obviously i'm going to um, minister and share and so on but what is the end and right? what is it that you want to see what are the or what are the you know several things that you want to see today god uh, to ask that question right so um the uh the thing is you know we minister with the fruit in mind we minister with with that in mind and uh, that that is also a prayer and desire as well that we expect uh we come with that expectation um that it's not just going to be passing on of information but it's going to be much more than that because we are ministers of the new covenant right we studied that right in second corinthians chapter 3 uh we see that we are ministers of the new covenant and uh, we are ministers uh, and the holy spirit is the one who writes on people's hearts right but we are ministers of god uh, and the holy spirit writes and he gives us the ability to minister so that in a manner that uh, the spirit of god writes on people's hearts right when we see in um, uh, chapter 3 uh, verse 4 that our sufficiency comes from him he has made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant um and then um uh, verse 8 that the ministry of the spirit is more glorious and therefore we speak with confidence and verse 12 we have such hope we use great boldness of speech and so on right and uh, and of course you know in in the first epistle that first corinthians chapter um, chapter 1 chapter 2 he says you know i um, uh, verse 5 you know your faith should be not in the wisdom of men but in the power of god right but also uh, with the power of the holy spirit he shares the wisdom of uh, of the holy spirit as well in words that the holy spirit gives comparing spiritual things with spiritual right so our expectation is to see the manifestation of uh, uh, of god okay so see god um, encounter with people uh, encounter people's lives now that's the end result right and it could be in very significant ways you know when i like it could be in very simple ways but very powerful just because it's simple does not mean that it's life changing and powerful it could be you know one idea that would or one thought one the truth of one thought um or the truth of uh, what is shared uh, that completely changes uh, the destiny of people completely uh, destroys the yoke of the enemy right so that's the power of uh, god's word and that's the power you know like we've been studying you know that's a, that's that's god's word that's god's power so um it can happen in you know in significant ways in which you know there is repentance and uh, you know there is a lot of things happening we we see it it's tangible and so we we expect that but it can also be something that's happening internally uh, and we don't we, we may not even uh, you know uh, we may not see that right um uh, but there's something you know happening on the inside Okay. So um this one to turn our attention to Hebrews chapter 2 and um verses uh, 3 and 4 you know how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him verse 4 says God also bearing witness right so we want God to bear witness to what both with signs and wonders with various miracles and gifts of the holy spirit according to his own will right so he performs he watches over the word to perform it and he bears witness to the preaching of his word and uh, to the preaching of the gospel primarily with the preaching of his word with signs wonders and with various miracles and gifts of the holy spirit so um so we we want that right as ministers of god we can expect that okay um so let our expectation be that people encounter god let our expectation be that it uh, you know that there will be signs and wonders and miracles and that there will be um, you know there will be something supernatural in the hearts in the bodies in the minds of people 
Okay, so it's not a wrong expectation; it's a very scriptural expectation, right? And um, and so we we minister with that expectation, we minister with that prayer, uh, with that desire, and we pray towards that. We stand in faith and we we pray towards that. Okay, uh, let's look at a few things um, about expecting fruit uh, when it comes to ministering God's word. Okay, expecting fruit, expecting uh, the end result. Right, uh, we, we're in page um, page thirty six, and this is chapter eleven. Okay, page thirty six, chapter eleven. Okay, so what do we expect through this message? Okay, what is it that you you want to see happen? Um, there are several things. One is changes in the lives of people, change in the lives of people, that uh, there's change in their spirit, soul, and body. You know, those who are not born again are born again. Like those who uh, are in that valley of decision, those who are you know, on that wall saying, um, you know, do I choose, do I not choose, that they make a choice. Uh, they, they say, okay, I want Jesus, I want Christ. Right? That could be something. So their spirits are born again, and they are able to commune with God, and uh, you know their life changes. This new life and the destiny, uh, you know, changes, right? Um, and there is, uh, there could be change in the soul, which means uh, the mind, will, emotions. You know, maybe they are burdened, the burdens are lightened. Maybe there are strongholds in the mind, um, which is which is keeping them, which is keeping people imprisoned, um, which is keeping people in in in, uh, in prisons of uh, maybe addiction, maybe anger, maybe uh, it's unforgiveness, maybe it's bitterness, maybe it's regret, maybe it's shame. You know, whatever be the prison, um, you know, there could be change of that. Right. We so we we can expect uh, the power of God um, to to affect the individual in the soulish realm, in the realm of the soul, um, that there is a clarity of thought, that uh, there is all this confusion is taken away, that whatever inroads that the enemy has made um, through lies and through deceptions uh, in the minds of people, you know, wrong ideas and, uh, and wrong, um, uh, you know, wrong teachings or wrong doctrines and fear that we, we pray and uh, we can expect that through the, through the ministry of the word and spirit that that is broken. Right, and the soul flourishes. That the, the you know, like three John uh, two talks about that. That beloved, I pray that uh, you be in health and and prosper just as your soul prospers. So that's the prayer John prays, and and uh, that is something that that we can expect as well. Lord, let the soul prosper. Uh, let the thinking thrive. Uh, let uh, you know, uh, uh, like the, that psalm, uh, the entrance of your word gives light. So, Lord, let there be illumination. Uh, let all darkness, let all works of the enemy cease. Right? And we can expect that. And in the body, right? Uh, Lord, the, the God who created the body has a right to touch the body and change and realign. So we, we pray and we expect uh, in faith that, Lord, let there be change in the body let there be healing let there be restoration let there be strength um, let the weakness uh, be taken away uh, and we say uh, we st stand in faith based on what was done on the cross uh, that great exchange that happened on the cross because of the redemptive names of god and right? we stay we stand on all those promises and we expect um, god even as we minister god now the thing is it could be in line with any of those right you know whatever we are sharing uh, maybe you're sharing the gospel maybe you're not sharing the gospel but you're talking about a deeper life in christ okay it could be uh, anything but we can expect this outworking uh, as people encounter the power of god right um Secondly, uh, growth and spiritual maturity. Okay, um, growth uh, spiritually uh, that there will be edification. Right, um, where with the illumination, with the revelation comes the comes the conviction and the edification. Now, there's a building up that is um, spiritual cons uh, constructive spiritual progress. You know, that's one way of looking at edification, constructive spiritual progress that they come in. 
that um, you know where and whatever you know we have received and we have been edified by here we are you know faithful to deliver that and uh, we pray and expect lord let that freedom that i experience that growth that i experience that maturity that christ likeness that i experience god you know let that happen uh, to my friends here and we bring that and we expect that we say god let there be spiritual maturity let there be growth no more shaken about by different things or let them let them be established in your word let them be strong in your word no more you know shifts in identity no more shifts in you know no more insecurity and uh, uh, and all that with and all the behavior which comes with that you know, no more uh, living a lifestyle in a lower, lower realm Right? Uh, and and what you've called people to be lord that higher realm lord that invitation i pray that let there be maturity okay now when it comes to growth in spiritual maturity something will be kick started then right uh, excuse me um, so something would be uh, it would be initiated uh, and that's great like something would be uh, initiated then the spark would be lit the fire will be lit and that is great or it could be something that picks up speed you know your picks up momentum and you're there you to minister the word and there's a catalyst like something that has been building over the years or over whatever period of time now here's a push now there's a, there's a speeding up there is a momentum uh, of of that okay now it could be that right so uh, we know that growth is a process right so uh, it could be a start of a process it could be the you know the uh, uh, moving of momentum uh, of growth that's happening or it could be even be you know a maturing that's uh, that's happening right so we expect that lord let there be growth let there be rooting in your word let there be uh, things of the spirit being released right or it could be a you know a discovery a very exciting joyful discovery of something new say wow god uh, i i just discovered that i could i could pray in tongues right? or i just discovered that oh you speak you speak to me and you speak through me right uh, and these are all exciting joyful discoveries that happen and it's in the realm of you know growth and spiritual maturity or christ likeness saying yes i you know that that motivation on the inside saying okay um you know i will respond with christ love i will respond in christ likeness i will not react you know that that strong um that, that strengthening of the will okay um to to really come to that point and uh, the the word and the spirit of god accomplishing that so we we pray we can expect that specifically by uh, saying you know god we want to see that right we want to see that and obviously it may not be tangible right it won't be visible it's it's something that's happening on the inside and uh, yeah and praise god that god does that right uh, third day could be you know walking in victory the deliverance right um, and coming to the place of uh, really receiving what god has um, what Uh, you know what what he is extending to them right uh, receiving by faith receiving uh, you know with, without any shame you know sometimes what happens is now uh, we are in that place of not knowing what it is not what happens, uh, what is actually available not knowing my rights and privileges right and uh, we see that um, uh, in in um, uh, yeah in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12 let me just put that scripture here um okay 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 12 now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who's from god that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by god right that we might know the things that we might that that has been freely given to us by god okay um then you know uh, romans 8 and verse 32 he who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things there are certain things that have been you know given to us because we have come to the family of god because we have come we are born again right we received a brand new spirit a brand new identity there are certain things that and the 
the enemy tries his best to keep us, you know, uh, with the blinders or keep us, um, uh, keep the, all these things away or hidden, right? Uh, but we need to discover, and, and the Lord wants to show, the Lord wants to take us on that journey. Like we see, I has not seen, yet has not heard, but God has revealed these things to us through his spirit. And he, and he wants to do that. You know, and, and the freely the things that have been freely given to us by God, that the Spirit of God um, might, that we might know it. Okay. Um, so what are my rights? What are my privileges? What is my position? What are these things that have been freely given and uh, what I can walk in? So, um, so there's a discovery of that. There's a, you know, uh, uh, and walking of that, uh, walking in of that or experience of that. Right. And also deliverance, you know, when it comes to deliverance, the freedom, uh, freedom from uh, being held by sin, freedom from all forms of addictions, right? That freedom, it's like uh, the, the, the prison door is open um, you know, for us to know that uh, the prison door is open, that we can, we can walk out and we have been given the freedom to walk out. So um, to, to share that and to expect uh, that freedom uh, to to be manifest in people's life, right? Um, and uh, of course, we can expect many other things, healings, signs, wonders, miracles. Okay, so let me let me just go back to uh, sermon topics and um, and uh, yeah, let me just put a column there, you know, uh, expectation. Okay, so I see that uh, sermon topic. And uh, okay, so um, I'll, I'll just project it in just in a bit. Okay, so so in one line, you know, uh, we can uh, we can just write down what is it that uh, that we expect. When you share this, I know we're doing it as an activity, we're doing it as a class thing, but um, but really, you know, in you sharing that word, you know, what is that expectation? Okay, so let's let's look at that. Let's take a um, okay. Here we go. I hope you're able to see it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, Louis Oluwafemi, you can you can enter the topic and title in this sheet, right? Um, in this sheet that we've mentioned here, um, that I, that I'm projecting right now, uh, the link is there in the classwork section, and uh, you can just click on that link and uh, you can enter your topic, the double portion and the title. Um, you can enter it in this sheet. Right? Thank you. Okay, so. Um, so what is that expectation? Okay, who wants to go first? Any, um, you can just uh, tell us and you can put it there. Okay, so Sam, I think you're you're ready. I can see your cursor there. Or I don't know whose cursor that is. Oh yeah, that's yours. So why don't you uh, tell us, go ahead. What is it? Um, Okay, you're sharing about uh, a Christian's non-conforming lifestyle. Okay, something that's radical, something that they don't compare with others. So, what is it that you uh, that you want? What is your expectation when you share the word? Okay, while Sam is thinking. Anyone else? Okay. I see Tarun's cousin. Yes, Tarun. Um, yeah, Pastor, just uh, wanted people to know and understand various ways in which God speaks and be okay. sensitive to all different ways. Right. So uh, to be aware of uh, uh, the different ways and to be sensitive to the different ways. So it's, it's an awareness and they also discover and probably... Um, you could, you know, in a, maybe not in this setting, but in a setting, uh, you could also lead the people to, uh, you know, to experience that. 
right to uh, hear from god um, yeah, so that can be a, so it can be a discovery of it so people just are released into it um yeah so that's uh, yeah you can do, so you can put that down okay so i see um what uh, let me just uh, wrap the text okay okay so sam has put um, the believers are encouraged to live in an uncompromised life um according to the truth of okay can check themselves on the various compromises they have made and rectify okay so uh, an uncompromised life um so it's uh, it's going to be a, a radical life and so it's going to be a time of reflection and coming back right um uh, so you're kind of launching people to live a radical life right if it's going to be a life where you know i'm kind of constantly comparing myself and uh, i want to uh, you know stay with the comfortable stay what's comfortable and uh, what's what's comforting what's comfortable uh, what's familiar but here you know it's a challenge right uh, he you it's a, it's is going against the flow it's a, it's a different it's a different walk altogether it's it's not easy but um uh, it's it's not easy but at the same time you know it it can be exciting it's uh, walking in line with what god wants and all that right so it's a time of reflection and it's a time of uh, definitely making choices godly choices and um, yeah that's wonderful so so um so you can just put that you know i i, I would like to see you know maybe that's that way you can i rephrase it you know saying you know i'd like to see um uh, the audience or the believers um uh, make decisions to live a uncompromised life and uh, to really see that happen in their lives right so you can do that okay uh, anyone else would like to try what do you want to expect to see um you know, at the end of your message what you share uh i know what is that that's fine absolutely okay okay um okay anyone else you can um uh, somebody put a hand up okay alice you want to try yeah pastor so okay. uh yeah if i have to phrase it that way i want to see the audience to you know make the make a uh, praise and worship um uh, as a lifestyle okay and uh, start praising when you even don't feel like doing it right because uh, yeah and uh, and to believe that no matter what praise can bring that plot twist in the time of adversity yeah i was actually a little curious about that phrase no plot twist uh, can you just <laughs> yeah. explain that uh, what is that uh, plot, plot twist plot twist is something that uh, happens when you don't expect that to happen especially in a kind of you know in a story if if we have to take any kind of story or any kind of situations uh where uh, the story is going one way okay and uh, uh and you see there is no hope there's a kind of dead end and suddenly something happens the situation turns completely you know uh turn around the situation completely turns around so yeah that is something is in my heart okay plot twist so yeah so i get that so uh, the thing is um, so you uh, you're going to be um, expecting people to understand uh, praise and worship as not something yeah. that is ritual something that is you know for sundays or it's not about singing it's not about music but it's something much uh, deeper even though those are the expressions right so yeah. so it's a it's a complete paradigm shift in the way people live so so that's a, that's another way to you know uh, end it like saying okay now maybe you know there is pain in your body maybe there is confusion uh, yeah. in your family maybe there is you know lack of peace but you know let's go ahead and thank god because he is the prince of peace let's go ahead and praise god because he is a healer and by yeah. his stripes we are healed you know and and lead people in that in the proclamation of that so you know people have heard the message they have the information hey uh, this is what happened jehoshaphat did this um this is what happened there was a shout of praise when um, praise, you know, yeah. at, at jericho joshua did this jericho. and um, yeah so so they have the information they have the scriptural you know foundation so they did it 
um, you know, Paul and, uh, Paul and uh, was it Paul and Barnabas, um, you know, in, in, in the prison at Philippi, well, this is what they did. Or Paul and Silas, I forget. But um, this is what they did. They, they sang uh, despite their difficulty. Right, so yeah. um, despite the circumstances, despite the difficulty, they sang, they praised to God, and um, so um, yeah. So the thing, you know, for people to experience that, right? So very exciting. Okay, awesome. So you can yeah. you can put that. Okay, you can just uh, put that in a statement. Okay. Uh, okay. I see. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. So Chris, I see your cursor. Go ahead, Chris. Paul and Silas. Okay. Thank you. Say. Uh, would you like yeah, to share, so, Chris? Yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, my topic is, uh, um, I would say, a little bit um, sometimes it can be contentious, um, as well as, you know, there are, uh, you, know, um, you know, different views of, of you know, prosperity, um, you know, even, even uh, expressed uh, in the Bible. Right. Um, so I think what I want to initially start is to, I mean, the expectation would be to, to explain some of these different views and also to, to, um, you know, define a, a, a kind of, um, you know, a, you know, a way of being able to, um, uh, you know, I mean, how, how, how do people live, uh, you know, uh, in, in a, in a world that is, you know, that, that, is, you know, uh, you know, subscribes to prosperity, one. Mm -hmm. And secondly, also there is the you know, um, uh, there's nothing wrong in being you know being prosper prosperous, as as long as it's not the uh, you know the uh, the 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 you know, the be a, uh, mm -hmm. be and and end of all. So um, uh, I'm still trying to you know trying to uh, get my thoughts uh, around this. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, so the thing is to, um, you know, yeah, to, to present it, uh, you know, concisely because of time factor, but of course you can, you know, it can be a personal study and a personal, uh, you know, uh, 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 putting together of a sermon that can be, you know, used in different forums and it will be uh, really life changing because, yeah, because if you look at because of the abuse uh, or because of the perception of wealth itself, Right, and the abuse of wealth and so on. So it's kind of crept into the church, and like we've, um, or in the life of a believer, where there is uh, not a proper understanding of uh, of wealth and understanding of prosperity. Prosperity, you know, um, uh, encompassing everything. You know, right? Uh, finances is one part of it. Uh, prosperity is actually really success in everything that you're putting your hands to, and you know. Um, so, uh, so it'll be a great message to dispel the 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 lies, to dispel the myths, um, to dispel the uh, maybe even the um, uh, what's the word um, uh, some of the uh, uh, myths and lies and uh, some of the prejudices you know about uh, about when it comes to wealth, right? Um, so to dispel that and to hold it in good tension. Right, this truth about prosperity to hold in. So it's a, so it would be a dispelling of lies, dispelling of uh, myths. So it's um, it's something that the person, you know, they'll it'll be a complete renewal of mind um, in the person uh, when it comes to just exposing this. This and this can be a very liberating experience for some people. Right, um, let's say a businessman. He, Every time there is some preaching about money, maybe he, he's cringing. You know, he's like, "Oh God, you know, I, I, I need to work towards a profit." At the same time, I see that money is the root of all evil, and you know, just being shot um, like a bullet. And and I'm like, I need to handle money. I need to make sure that this thing grows, that business grows, and you know, it can be very liberating for you know, uh, maybe uh, a working professional, a businessman, or someone who's you know who wants to be an entrepreneur, but who's, who's stuck, who's thinking, uh, does God really want me to do that? Right? Uh, do I deal with this? You know, how how do I deal? With it? Can God call me to do that? You know, because money is. Uh, maybe the, the thing is money is evil. You know, I, I think I've shared with the class um, instance where we had um, a Bible college students, two two students, uh, one of the earliest batches, uh, and uh, one was you know 
and the pastor, the father was a, had a church, he was a pastor in the church and he had sent the two sons saying, okay, go get trained, come back, serve in the church. Like the elder son uh, was like, he was absolutely, he knew his call to pastor. He fit in very well. He was um, absolutely fine. Um, the second one, you know, he was always very, very uh, talented, very, uh, very intelligent boy. But um, he would have issues when we're talking about, you know, uh, certain things like, uh, and he was always kind of held back uh, and he would, he was not free. But the one time we saw that, you know, everything broken was when we were talking about finances, when we were talking about prosperity. And uh, after the class, he came and said, you know, but, but, God, but uh, you know, when it comes to ministry, you must leave everything and go. You know, what you're saying is not right, Pastor. You know, uh, we should leave everything and go. That's what it is. But then we looked at some of the examples of, you know, uh, we looked at uh, uh, we looked at wealth, wealth itself and about Joseph and Daniel and where they served and so on and the purpose and will of God. And there was so much freedom, right? So much freedom because he... Uh, he was interested in starting a music business and doing something on those lines. And, uh, and there was so much freedom. So we could see a before and after kind of a, you know, a, a picture in that person. So, yeah, so this can be very life-changing, very liberating, right? And completely change a paradigm shift in the way a person lives very. Um, so you, we, we need to expect that. Right. You can expect that. God, let there be freedom. Let there be liberty. Let this truth um, go forth with power, with clarity, and let it, you know, let it be rooted in people's life and let people receive in revelation. Let it be. A, let there be an opening of an eyes. Right. So you pray towards that, and also breakthroughs, breakthroughs in finances. People stuck. Right. Um, uh, maybe they're. Uh, a problem of debt, debt. Sorry, debt. Uh, problem. You know, uh, and there could be you. We, we can expect the Spirit of God to give words of wisdom. Right? Even as you're ministering towards the end, you say, Spirit of God, you, you know, flow through me. You know, what is it that you want to want me to speak to the congregation? What is it that you want to show? Uh, maybe there's a word of wisdom. Maybe there's, you know, God is saying, okay, uh, you've been thinking about three deals and, uh, and uh, God, you know, uh, I just sense that, uh, that God is, you know, uh, pointing in this direction and uh, and that that is going to fix you know everything uh, or something like that you know something that god has already spoken to their hearts and there's a confirmation that's coming so word of wisdom right um so don't restrict it to be just um informative thing hey this is what god thinks about money so you should also think the same way but but move the, you know uh, move the congregation into experiencing the revelation uh, let it be rooted and into you know experience the power of god hand of god uh, and bringing the word of god in the situation of maybe somebody is in debt and they you know they need the hand of god to put them on that path of recovery of debt maybe it's their choice maybe there are some decisions that they made whatever it is but you know there can be redemption from that right so Pray for strategies. Pray, God, you know, I pray that you'll show them step by step how to come out of it and give them that uh, disciplined thinking and with regard to spending, with regard to, you know, what they need to do. And wow, that can be, and, and it can open up to a time of counseling, etc. right? So, yeah, very exciting. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else? Or shall I call out some names? Okay. Rose, I see you're, you've already entered. For believers to realize that humility is not just a mundane character, but it is, it is actually a strength that pleases God, delights God, and we are called to become it. And it's a very basic thing that moves the heart of God. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, as much as our identity is as a son and a daughter of God and God, you know, uh, uh, pours so much into us, you know, that should not, uh, and, you know, there's so much of revelation and knowledge, but always uh, it's tempered with love so that it, you know, we don't get puffed up. And also the, the you know, we have, um, we have the Lord Jesus as our example, like we see in Philip, Philippians, how um, he, 
uh, he took on the form of a bond servant. So, yeah, so ex you're explaining that. And also, you know, it's a weapon. You know, humility is uh, something that protects the believer and it's, uh, it's a weapon of a believer, right? It protects the believer from pride. It protects the believer from uh, opening those doors into all that, you know, all that comes with pride or amb selfish ambition or all that and display of the flesh. So it actually protects um, the believer from or from all that. It's, it's actually, um, you know, it's a, it's a shield, right? Protects the believer. And the fact is that it opens the believer. You know, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Right in the book of James, we see that. Um, so you know you're positioning as a believer to receive more grace because of humility. Right. So, so yeah. So which means uh, it can be a you know it can be a message uh, and very expectation um, and and the right position as a hum, you know as humility, saying what God says, receiving what God. And saying what God says about you, now that is humility, true humility, right? And uh, it it need not be always uh, a very soft-spoken, you know, person or uh, somebody who speaks very, very, you know, it can be a very confident person, uh, a person who just thrives, a person who's just alive, and yet humility. You know, normally we don't associate, right? We say, okay, that person maybe has a pride issue. No. Right. You're you're just thriving in what God has created you to be, and you're 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 being hum humble because you you accept what God has called you to be, and you you're accepting what God says you are, right? and and uh, and that aspect of humility is also very very powerful, right? So it it breaks out all those stereotypes, and uh, it gives uh, you know a, a different picture, you know. Maybe as temperamentally, you know, I'm not a quiet person. Maybe you know, and then you're just trying to make yourself, uh, you know, someone who God has not created you to be, right? Uh, so, yeah, like meekness. Jesus, meekness is strength. Yes, absolutely. Right, and and you see, Jesus just walked into situations. He said, uh, you know, very confident, right? Uh, you see that. Uh, you give them something to eat, <laughs> or you know, um, you know, pick up your bed and walk. Matt and walk very confident and uh, just declaring right um, and commanding this thing to leave uh, this uh, you know that's humility right recognizing that you're recognizing your authority and recognizing who you are so well I, I know you're talking about one aspect of humility but I just thought I'll just share that nice wonderful and Rupa has said to inspire on the importance of pleasing God by in, in, intentionally putting on a gentle and quiet spirit. Okay, something on the lines of what Rose is also sharing. But yeah, you're talking about, um, uh, uh, I'm just looking at, uh, um, yeah, the beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, right? Mm. So drawing an example from Sarah's character and love and humility. Yeah, so you can give some life, life examples Right and uh, and what humility is, you know, uh, I think that will help uh, break out some kind of you know wrong stereotypes, um, wrong uh, ideas that people might have about humility, and um, and you know because people just need to come alive and be who God has created them to be, right, and uh, and be humble. Okay, okay. Anyone else? Um, Okay, Prabhakar as uh, Prabhakar Rao as God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement to the shedding of His blood. Um, so, so yeah, Prabhakar. So, what is it that um, you want? Uh, you know, expectation more in terms of like how um, what do you want done in the congregation? What do you want? How do you want the congregation to, to respond? Uh, what do you want God to, you know? do uh, in the congregation right? in the listener's life uh, when you share this message right? presenting ourselves to God that's a powerful thing right? yes. yes pastor thank you for yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the whole point is uh, as it lies in the title like ideal sacrifice or ideal sacrifice um, 
point of uh, this sermon or expectation from is see the god has uh, his own plan and uh, he had given the sacrifice the sacrifice has its own history earlier it was uh, through the shedding of blood of animals and but god has presented christ as a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the whole world so god has completed his work and even christ has completed uh, his work on the cross uh, so he done his part but as a congregation and as a believer or as a servant of god what is our stand or what we can offer to god uh, which is pleasing in the sight of it uh, in the sight of god and as well as acceptable so there are certain points which is uh, which is in the romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 and uh, i had taken out three points like uh, the living sacrifice the holy sacrifice and uh, an acceptable one so it has uh, its own definitions um so how can we uh, you know uh, present ourselves completely mold ourselves according to the will of god so that he uh, our life should be completely acceptable not as a sacrifice but yet it should be uh, you know acceptable to god and uh, we should live a life which should um, you know uh, show uh, the work of christ in us uh, to the people so that when they see us they can understand the love of christ and the sacrifice of christ in our lives okay okay wonderful yeah so uh, also if you can look at some practical examples right how can um, well uh, well this is a whole aspect of sacrifice um so which means that i let go of something in my choices in the way i live you know i i let go of something um and at the same time uh you know on other the other side of sacrifice is also maybe you know uh, taking on some responsibility right uh taking on some Uh, something that god wants you to do and maybe it's not the comfortable of things to do but then you you take it up anyway um so that's the other you know uh, other aspect of sacrifice so uh, so in practical terms right you know how do i live that out you know if you can uh, like spend a minute or two on it i think that will be also great so this is good right true person thank you yeah. thank, thank you. you thank you okay thanks everyone uh, that was super uh i i for me i it was like i was just getting so excited i don't know about you just just going through the topics and uh you know uh i feel like preaching preaching on some of these topics just taking it uh, so very exciting uh so i hope you flesh it out work it out uh work on it so when we meet on um... okay can somebody help uh, louis uh with the link please um uh one second uh, let me just check or right, i'll just post it again on the stream um louis yeah so you can uh, you can get that link uh somebody can post it on the stream and then louis can take a look at it okay wonderful thank you so much have a super weekend and we'll meet again next week okay god bless bye bye Thank you pastor